Hello everybody and welcome to this second video tutorial for the Autobank system. In the first video we looked at the manual annotation phase of the tree banking process and in this video we're going to look at the automatic uh, annotation phase. So you'll remember from the paper that I uh, mentioned that uh, there are the two phases, the manual annotation phase is here and that results in the creation of a, an initial seed set of handcrafted trees and they are input into the automatic uh, annotation phase which um, uses them to learn how to annotate the rest of the corpus essentially. Um, and the reason that's required, of course, is because the pen tree bank is very large, it contains 50,000 sentences, so it's not feasible to do all of those by hand. So how does the automatic annotation phase work then? Well, essentially it works the same as the manual annotation phase, except that all the stages are automated. So in the manual annotation phase, we started off by choosing categories for the words in the sentence and then we shipped off the sentence with those categories to the parser and that returned uh, a candidate set of trees which we then had to select from. Um, we had to select the best tree and add it to the seed set. So in the automatic annotation the system starts off by labeling the over words of the sentence and it does that by using a statistical super tagger um, and once it's done that, it then uh, again ships it off to the parser, which is automated, and that was automated in the manual annotation phase, in fact, unless you were using the derivation builder uh, to build up the tree by hand. Um, and then the uh, parser will hopefully return a set of candidate trees, and the system then has to choose um, the best tree from that. And the way that it does that is to use various heuristics, so there's kind of like a cascade of heuristics um, that it uses, and it starts off... Uh, by comparing the dependencies in the two trees. Um, so when you first start the automatic generator, it, it begins by extracting a set of dependency mappings between the trees. And essentially those dependencies that are used are composed of the, the two words that enter into the, a dependency, but also things like the, the, the category of the mother node, um, any prop bank labels that are used in the, in the extended pen tree bank to uh, label that dependency, um, and various other information. So it uses dependencies that are uh, sort of inspired by the Collins dependencies from Mike Collins' uh, original work on statistical um, CFG parsing. Um, and so it uses uh, that heuristic initially, um, but sometimes uh, you could have a situation where there are ties between uh, the, the, the scores of two candidate trees, and so then it falls back to the other heuristics. And the first one that it uses is it compares the constituencies in the two trees and looks for the closest um, match in, in terms of constituency. It then um, looks at things like uh, the, le the lexical scores or, or that were assigned by the super tagger. Uh, it then looks at things like uh, how much right branching is in the candidate trees and it favours a greater amount of right branching. It looks at how many null heads and how many movements there are and tries to minimize those. And essentially I ordered those tests in, all, in, in sort of the order of how reliable I thought that they were and how, they, how well they seemed to perform uh, when I was testing out the system. Um, so that's basically how, how that system works. Now I mentioned that it uses a super tagger to do the, uh, the labeling of the words automatically, a statistical super tagger. And the super tagger that it uses is the Clark and Curran super tagger from uh, the 2007 paper, which uh, was originally designed to do C CCG super tagging. And their super tagger took as input a pen tree bank part of speech and a word and output uh, a CCG super tag. Now you'll um, remember that we can actually view CCG trees here and the reason for that, the primary reason for that is that I retrained that super tagger so that it takes as input a word and a CCG super tag uh, and outputs an, a minimalist grammar super tag. Um, so the reason I changed the input tags to um, being pen tree, uh, sorry, to being CCG super tags instead of using uh, pen tree bank parts of speech is that uh, the CCG super tags are much more, uh, cl uh, much closer in terms of granularity to the minimalist uh, grammar tags, and so um, uh, because both contain information about subcategorization, for example, uh, and so that made the super tagger much more accurate and much more efficient. 
Um, and you will see that the, the these pre-terminals are actually the tags that the super tagger uses as its input tags. And they are actually composed of several sub tags, which are separated by underscores. Uh, the leftmost sub tag is the CCG super tag. Um, uh, and that's usually the same as what you'd find in, in the actual CCG bank, except that for coordination, I actually uh, got the system to construct proper slash categories rather than using the just the atomic conj category. I think it was that it CCG bank uses um, and that that allowed it to choose the correct coordinator much more accurately. And then you've got two pen tree bank parts of speech categories appended there, uh, which are usually the same, but, but not always. So here they're not the same, for example. Um, and the first one of those is uh, Julia Hockemeyer's amended uh, pen tree bank part of speech category. Um, and uh, that's because she, she went through, when she was creating CCG bank, she went through and corrected a lot of the... Um, uh, uh, tagging errors, that, um, uh, in, uh, the errors that were in the, in the pen tree bank, uh, and uh, that's very useful um, uh, to have. So I've included that. And the second uh, tag is uh, essentially the original pen tree bank part of speech, but often appended with some extra information, such as here it's got plurality, so it tells the system that this is um, a plural demonstrative, um, and the um you, you'll also think find things like person on there sometimes and gender and uh, if it's a reflexive there might be a self uh, tag and all of that stuff basically i found that adding it in helped the super tagger to do its job much more effectively uh, so that's why that was included and there's often also prop bank information here so this arg zero tag tells the uh, system that it, it must be a verb that has an agent argument uh, and so uh, arg0 only appears on things like transitive verbs, it won't appear on, uh, and, and, and it will appear on unergative intransitives, but it won't appear on passives and unaccusative intransitives, for example. So that, again, helps the system to do its job. And sometimes you'll see an arg1 as well, and you'll also find things like um, TMP for temporal uh, on prepositional phrases sometimes, or MNR for manner, um, uh, adverbials, and so on and so forth. Uh, so all of that stuff is to help the super tagger uh, along. Now, one point I should mention in connection with that is um, that I noted in the first video that you can actually add new sentences to the tree bank. You don't just have to annotate pen tree bank sentences by using this option, annotate new sentence. And you can put uh, any sentence in there that you like and just annotate it. And um, once you've you know selected all the categories, you, you'll parse it and add it to the seed set. Now that's useful uh, in terms of uh, you're extending your corpus, so when you train a st statistical model, that stuff can all be uh, used, of course. Um, but for the actual uh, automatic generation uh, phase of the tree banking, uh, that sentence wouldn't actually be uh, used at all. And the reason is um, that, as we've seen, the system requires a CCG bank tree uh, to be attached to it to um, to a given uh, sentence, so that it can extract the, the preterminal categories and use those to train uh, to train the super tagger. Uh, and of course, when you enter a new sen sentence into the system, uh, usually you won't have a CCG bank tag uh, tree behind it. Uh, I say usually because there is an exception to that, uh, which is um, that if you find that. Uh, you want to annotate a, a certain construction type, and that construction type is only found in a very long sentence. So let's just open up um, a faulty worder, for example. Uh, then you're going to have a bit of a problem because uh, working with very long sentences is uh, really difficult uh, for two reasons. Firstly, the parser will be very slow uh, on long sentences. Uh, and secondly, trying to build these up in the derivation builder to find out wh what you've done wrong um, is an absolute nightmare. So generally, when I was creating MG Bank, I was working with sentences between 8 and 15 words in length, which are kind of long enough to be um, sophisticated and to have sophisticated constructions, but but also um, practical to work with. And sometimes I'd go up to as, as much as 25 words and, and the parser, if it, if, it, if it wasn't a sentence that required one of those null heads that's only introduced much later, then it's fine. Um, but if it required you know, an extra poser, for example, then going up to that length is gonna, is gonna be uh, probably not practical. So you'll have to play around to experiment with that sort of thing. Um, but sometimes because of Zip's law, 
Uh, a lot of constructions are very rare and often they're the sort of constructions that we're really most interested in as linguists. And uh, you'll find that you, you can only actually find that construction inside a really long sentence. Uh, so that became um, problematic because I wanted the automatic generator to be able to use that information when it was actually uh, uh, generating um, uh, more trees. Um, and so basically the way that uh, you can get around that is that if you um, uh, just include the words of the construction that you're interested in and leave everything else out and annotate a new sentence with those words, then the system will match that, that sub-sentence to the uh, original and it will reconstruct a small CCG bank tree um, by basically just taking the, the nodes um, that it requires, basically, um, and that will give it the pre-terminals that it needs. So what I mean by that is that, uh, let's say you just wanted to, to um, do uh, have a transitive sentence and you couldn't find that anywhere, which of course you will be able to because they're very, very common. Um, but just as an example, you'll see at the start of this sentence you have the move leaves United. So let's just say that that's the sentence we want to extract. Then all you do is open up annotate new sentence. You type in the move leaves United. Uh, you'll annotate that sentence and you'll add it to the seed set. And then when the automatic generator um, is run, it will match that sentence with this original and extract just a subtree for that for those four words. Now the words don't have to be um, uh, continuous; uh, they can they can be um, discontinuous. So you could have the move leaves utilities, for example, if you wanted to. Uh, you just have to make sure that the categories you're using actually make sense. So don't try to reuse that as a complementizer if it's actually a determiner in, in the sentence in the original sentence because obviously that will extract the wrong category for that. Um, but other than that you can you can uh, pretty much do what you want as long as the, as the words match exactly and they're in the right order. Um, but you can leave out everything in between basically. Um, so that can be very useful just for kind of stripping out lots of adjuncts and things that aren't relevant um, and just get back to a much simpler sentence. Um, it's often useful to use this annotate new sentence anyway to just to test out your thinking on a given construction type. So if you even if you're annotating a 15 word sentence, um, if you're doing like you know say a passive, then you just want you can just set up a very simple a four word passive um, and uh, you know just test test out your thinking on that and find out where things are going wrong. Um, so that's very useful. Um, so. One thing I want to just mention quickly while we're in the GUI is that since the first video um, was made, a couple of things have changed inside here. Basically, I said before that uh, there was the the option to start the automatic generator from inside the GUI, but that I hadn't used that for a while and I didn't recommend using it. Well, I've just stripped that out now because it is deprecated and, uh, as I say, things need to be run from the command line anyway. And I've also stripped out all of those options from the settings menu, so that's much uh, neater and, and, and more compact now. Um, but uh, the other thing uh, that's changed slightly is that if you uh, click on either train LSTM super tagger or load LSTM super tagger, you, will, uh, you, you won't need to click on train initially, by the way, because I'll be sending this to you with a trained super tagger, but you will need to load it. And when you click on load, you get the option to use either the reified super tagger or the abstract super tagger. And the abstract super tagger is the one where most of the subcategorization and agreement restrictions have been stripped out. So the idea is that that one should be a bit more robust, uh, but it also will probably overgenerate more because it doesn't have the same uh, restrictions uh, that this one does. Uh, so you can sort of play with uh, both of those. Um, I should say that um, you know there is a parser included, as I mentioned in the first video. So once you've loaded the LSTM super tagger, you'll be able to parse uh, sentences with it. Uh, that's that parser is at the moment uh, at very much an early stage prototype. It's literally just been um, implemented in the last few days, and at the moment it uh, isn't working uh, brilliantly. It's just um, uh, a prototype, and you can use it to, uh, uh, to play around with it to parse. Um, particularly uh, shorter sentences it, it works okay with uh, but the longer ones it's not so good with and uh, each time we train it, it it seems to 
get certain sentences and not get others. So at the moment, it's it's getting object relatives quite well. Uh, it suddenly wasn't getting those. It's not getting across the board movement at the moment, um, but it was getting them a few days ago. Uh, so uh, at the moment, we're, we're trying to work on just improving the um, the super tagger that that um, lies behind it uh, because it's an a, it's an A star parser based on the uh, A star algorithm of uh, Lewis and Stephen 2014 for CCG, but adapted for minimalist grammars. Um, and the super tagger that uh, is used with it is a different super tagger from the one used for automatic generation because. The Clark and Curran one requires input tags, uh, which you don't have at uh, test time, of course. Um, and this CCG, uh, sorry, this super tagger that we use for this parser is an LSTM super tagger that uh, basically uses word embeddings. Um, and that was created by Milos Danojevic, and it works very, very well for CCG super tagging. Um, and uh, um, it's based on, in fact, it's based on, on Lewis's uh, uh, super tagger. It's quite similar to that one. Um, and we're at the moment uh, in the process of, of improving that um, specifically for minimalist grammars. So that's a work in progress. Um, so, but it's fun to play around with anyway. So one important point to make is that it's not indicative um, of what the grammar, what the formal grammar can handle. Uh, so, you know, um, a lot of wide coverage parsers rely both on a formal grammar and on a statistical model, and um, that those two things are very separate. And if you want to know what the grammar can handle, the best way to do that is to go into the categories and look at the comments, and you can search for certain things. If you want to find you know, an ECM construction, just type in ECM, and you'll get all the different categories that are used for ECM. And if you want control, then you can put in that, and you'll get you know, object control and promise type subject control, for example. Um, uh, and you can you can have a look at, at the trees and you can open up trees uh, for those particular constructions and look at how uh, look at how they've been built up. So let's actually move on to looking at how we can start the automatic generator now then. Um, so what we'll do is open up a new terminal window for that and uh, Essentially how this works is that you need to just CD into the same folder that you start the GUI from and uh, initially you type exactly the same thing, type in autobank.py, mgbank or whatever the name of your uh, tree bank project is um, and then uh, you have to put some other arguments in order to get the uh, automatic generator to run. Now if you want to know what those arguments are you can just type hyphen h or double hyphen help and that will bring up an explanation of what all the different um, command line arguments are, which I'm going to just talk about uh, briefly now. So the first argument you have to use is the name of your MG bank, as we saw, and that should always go straight after autobank.py. Um, then we saw what H does. That brings up the help menu, which we're looking at now. Uh, the first, um, all, all of these arguments now are technically optional arguments, so they don't have to appear. The system will still work if you don't include them. But this first one, auto gen, if you don't include that, it will just open up the GUI. It won't start an automatic generation session. So you always need to include that, and uh, you know you should just include that as the first argument um, after the MG Bank name, basically. Uh, so I always keep a text file with. Um, the most common command uh, command that I use to start the automatic generator so I can just edit these quite easily if I need to in this text file and then copy and paste them into a terminal window and you can see there I've got uh, python autobank.py mgbank autogen and then the other arguments follow that so if the um, if these options actually uh, command line options uh, have a letter after them, a capital letter or a couple of letters, then that means you need to include a parameter afterwards after the, the option name, um, but uh, after the argument name rather. Um, but uh, in the case of autogen or, or the ones that don't have the letters after, you don't need to include a parameter, you just have to include the argument name. Now the um, the next argument is the the files argument, which does require a parameter, and uh, basically this allows you to specify uh, either a single file or a range of files or a single folder or a range of folders. So if you want to just annotate trees from the um, pen tree bank file wsj1204.merge, then you can just include that file name, and it will only do that. 
or you could put a couple of file names, um, uh, so 1204 to 1505, for example, um, or you could put a single folder name or a range of folder names, and it will do all of those. Now, when I was actually doing um, generating MG Bank, uh, well, I still am doing that, in fact, um, I basically use uh, uh, 24 instances of AutoBank running in parallel, um, and I, I, I get each one of them to annotate one section from the Pen Tree Bank. Okay, so I just used um, this, uh, just as a folder uh, name. Now, sometimes, of course, the servers will crash or something, and so uh, you'll have to restart, and you don't want to have to start from the beginning of the file or folder again. So basically, the way that you can do that is you include the file n name or, or, or the range, starting with the file that it stopped on. So say it crashed on file 1204, you could include 1204 to 15, or 1204 to 1299, say, if you're just doing folder 12. Um, and then you can also use this start line argu uh, argument with a, um, an integer as its parameter, and that tells it to start from a given line. So it starts from one and goes up. So if, you, if it crashed on line three, you'd put three there, and then it would start from file 1204, line three. Now, um, the next argument down is uh, overwrite autos. And this you only want to include if you want to start a brand new uh, automatically generated tree bank. So if you include this, it will delete any existing auto trees that you have in the system. It won't delete the handcrafted trees in, in the seed bank, but it will delete all of the trees in the, um, in the auto uh, bank. So you only want to include this if you were starting off, uh, if, you, if you don't want to add to my tree bank and you want to start one of your own, you'd use this initially um, if you want to overwrite everything. Um, but if you uh, just want to add to it, then don't include this. And certainly once if you're running several auto banks in parallel you'll only include this the first in the first one first instance and then you want to delete it from your command line um, uh, otherwise you will uh, end up overwriting what 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 your first instance is generated already this next option check auto mappings you don't need to use that at all that was uh, something I used during development um, so forget about that um, these two options you probably won't want to use uh, certainly not initially um, but basically what they do is that uh, this verbal one, first of all, means that for any CCG bank tag that it encounters in, in um, a test sentence, or a sentence it's trying to annotate, it will include all um, MG categories that were seen with that CCG bank category um, during training. Um, and basically that means that uh, a lot more categories will get tried so it will be less efficient uh, but I found that sometimes the super tagger just wasn't tagging correctly for verbal categories so I included it I haven't actually ended up using it yet a lot of these options are the sort of things that uh, you you'll use later when you've already generated quite a lot of trees and you're trying to squeeze a few more out of the corpus uh, because you can keep uh, auto bank running over as long as you don't include this overwrite autos you can keep going over the same sentences again and again and sort of mining the corpus for more and more trees and so you can sort of all of these options are sort of things that you can um, play around with to try and uh, get some more trees um, all cats is the same as this all verbal cats except it does it for all categories um, this start line we've already looked at um, Sent len is basically specifies the length of the sentences that you want it to annotate. So you can either put a single number, uh, 13 say, it'll only do sentences of string length 13, or you can put a range of string lengths. So obviously for different lengths, you're probably going to want slightly different uh, settings, like you might want to tighten uh, the number of categories that the super tagger can use as you get into longer sentences, because it will get less and less efficient. Uh, so I, for example, started off by just generating, uh, running the automatic generator for sentences of length 1 to 12, and then I went up to 13 to 15, and so on and so forth, uh, and I was modifying the settings slightly each time. Um, so... Uh, that's that that can be used to do that um, here you've got beam ceiling and beam floor these are for the super tagger so it's gonna as I say try more than one tag per word and you can tell it where to start off the beam so 0 0.1 could be the beam ceiling that means that uh, it'll only try tags 
who's uh, MG tags whose probability is at least um, a tenth as, as likely as the best uh, tag, the highest scoring tag that it's assigned. Uh, and then it will gradually lower that beam until it hits the beam floor, at which point it stops. Uh, so these are actually, um, I think these are the numbers I, start, I, I was using generally uh, when I was doing this. Um, so here's the, uh, the timeout. So this uh, option takes an integer as an argument, specifies the number of seconds that the parser should run for before it gives up. Um, and I, I was using a timeout of six hours. Now, most sentences won't take that long to annotate or to fail, basically, like the parser will finish way before that, but sometimes it does take that long. And I have found cases where it added trees to the corpus uh, after about five and a half hours or something. So it is worth kind of setting that quite high. Um, as I say, most trees won't take that long. So, you know, it won't, it won't be the case that you'll have to wait uh, months for it to finish. Um, this next option is um, uh, the type of parser that you want to uh, want the system to use. Now you remember in the settings menu down here we've actually got the parser type um, and you had a couple of options in the beginning here which were the basic parser and the full parser and then you could have subversions of that here but these two are what you have access to in the automatic generator. The basic parser does not include extra poser heads or tough movement operators. And those things basically um, allow for rightward movements and for tough movement. Um, and they're very inefficient. So um, very often I just was running the basic parser first. And what you can do is run the basic parser over your sentences and then, and then run the generator again and switch the full parser on the, the, uh, the next time round. Because um, by then you'll already have annotated a lot of the uh, uh, sen uh, sentences, so the next time round it won't try to annotate those, so it won't waste time when it's in its inefficient mode on, on parsing those sentences. Um, so the next option is stop after, and that takes an integer, and that tells the uh, generator to stop once it's generated a certain number of trees. So if you put 50, uh, then it, once it's generated 50 trees, it'll just stop at that point. Um, this max move dist again is uh, an integer and that specifies the maximum string distance over which phrasal movement can occur. Uh, so the default is 15 um, and I was actually using 12 a lot of the time um, but again it's the sort of thing that you can start off with quite restrictive and then you can relax it on a, on a, on a, on a subsequent run. Um, and basically it makes things much more efficient. It makes no linguistic sense at all of course but that doesn't matter uh, because you're just trying to get as many trees as you can and by um, preventing movement from uh, from taking place over uh, an unlimited distance, you actually speed up the parser uh, quite a lot. Um, now, uh, the next um, argument is use autos. And um, basically what that does is that when you train your uh, super tagger and when you extract the dependency mappings um, to do the scoring, uh, you can actually tell it to use the automatic corpus that you've already that you, you might already have generated to do that. So if you've already generated ten thousand trees, you can then actually you work those into the super tagger by by setting that option and into the dependency mappings that are extracted. Um, so I um, haven't been using that so far, but I'm planning to use that when I get to a point when I am not generating any more trees. Then you can switch that on, and then it will be a different model at that point, and uh, you'll you'll get some extra trees for sure. Um, now, this next option, allow best tag, means that uh, the best scoring super tag that's predicted for a word will always be used regardless of other considerations. So sometimes the system will actually block tags if they weren't seen with a word during training, for example, and this overrides that for the best scoring tag. Again, so far I haven't been using that, but um, I'm still kind of... Uh, getting quite a few trees back at the moment. So all of these options are things that I'll start using once um, once the, uh, uh, the the number of trees I'm getting back, it, it begins to, to drop. Um, these two options are very important. These I do use, um, uh, and basically they uh, use the pen tree bank um, uh, categories, uh, sorry, the pen tree bank constituencies to constrain 
the the parser, the, the, the hypothesis space of the parser. So this first one, basically, um, the, the idea here is that if something is going to move in the minimalist tree, then it should be a constituent in the pen tree bank tree. That's the basic idea. Uh, I had to write lots and lots of exception rules to that, so it's not as simple as that, but that's the basic idea, and it does speed things up a lot uh, at, some ex at some expense of coverage, uh, but not much, actually, with all the exception rules. Um, this is similar, except that instead of constraining movement, it's constraining constituencies. So the idea is that if it's a constituent and the, um, in, in the minimalist tree, in the X-bar tree, then it should be a constituent in either the pen tree bank tree or the CCG bank tree. And I included CCG bank because that is binary, the same as uh, the minimalist trees, uh, the minimalist X-bar trees. And so uh, that gave extra constituencies that, that we're interested in that weren't in the pen tree bank tree. And again, I had to write lots of exception rules to that. So it's not as simple as that, but that is the basic idea. Uh, using both of these is the most optimal in terms of efficiency, but using either one of them gives you most of the efficiency gains that you'd get from using both of them together. Um, but it does speed it up a bit if you use both of, the, both of them together. Uh, those were also included in the settings menu in the GUI um, and you can switch them on and off uh, as required. Uh, I should say actually that um, other than these two options, all of these options, um, uh, uh, these options here uh, and these ones here, if you parse a sentence in the GUI and save it, those options will get saved and then they'll be applied every time you do reparsing from within the GUI. Uh, but these two will not be saved and they can actually be switched on and off as required. So to get things to reparse much quicker, you'll leave them on, but you'll find that some sentences you might have switched them off to annotate and you'll have to actually switch them off if you want to reparse those sentences. While we're here, actually, one thing I did neglect to mention uh, in the last video was this print partial analyses option, which is very useful for debugging your grammar. If we just switch that on, and if we open up uh, a tree that we've already annotated, let's just open the first tree in the seed bank. And if you want to reparse that tree, and let's use super tags because they're fastest. And this option says, uh, when, when you do reparsing, it's just looking at can it generate the X bar tree that it has saved? Uh, it doesn't look at the derivation tree, which may be different, but as long as the X bar tree is, is the same, it's fine. Um, but you can actually tell the system that you want to save the new derivation tree over the old one or not do that. Uh, you probably won't need to use this. I was using it really when I was developing Autobank, um, but just to be aware of what that is. So uh, we will click no there and parsing finished. If you look at the console now, you'll see lots and lots of output and basically what this does is it shows you all of the um, operations which were applied and, and, it, and, and the resulting constituents that were entered into the chart. Uh, so you can see here, so between each of the, the, whenever you see double lines, that sort of delineates an operation. So here we've got a merge operation, it has two arguments, merge arg1, merge arg2, and there's the result of the merge. Okay, so it gives you the head chains and the, and the non-head chains and so on and so forth. And there's also movement operations. So here we go, move, and that has a single argument because movement is a unary operation that essentially takes a tree and transforms it. And uh, there's the argument to move and there's the result of, of move. So that's useful, very useful to know for debugging your grammar. Um, so back to the uh, arguments of, of the automatic generator then, and we've got this allow frag argument. If you include that, then it will allow fragment parses. Um, if you don't include it, then it will not accept a parse unless it's headed by a main clause um, complementizer, uh, main clause C. But if you allow frag, then it will allow things like prepositional phrases and determiner phrases as, as parses. So the best thing is not to include that initially. So you'll find that really it's only the very shortest sentences that you need that on anyway. So first of all, what I did was I generated sentences uh, with the uh, basic parser for sentences of length 1 to 12. Then I switched on the full parser and got some rightward movement um, sentences and tough movement ones. And I found that the rightward movement was actually quite um, not very precise. It, it resulted in some bogus sentences. So I went in and corrected all those by hand because there was only a couple of hundred of them. Um, that's the only uh, time I had to do that. Um, and then I basically switched back on the, the basic parser and I switched the fragments on at that point. And then I went back over it and uh, that produced another thousand trees. 
And the reason I did that last was that I found that switching on fragments too early actually bled um, some analyses that required right, rightward movement. Um, so I left that till last to avoid that situation. Um, this next option, you uh, will only switch this on uh, for the first instance that you run of the automatic generator and the same with this one. And basically the, what these do is that the, this one will cause the super tagger to tra uh, it will cause the system to train a super tagging model um, so that it can label those overt categories and all subsequent instances can use that, uh, that, that trained model so you won't need to run that again. And the same for extracting the dependencies. So when it extracts dependency mappings, which it uses for the um, the first uh, uh, scoring method when it when it's uh, generated a set of candidate trees, um, it extracts these at this point. And you only want to run these the first time. And when you run the first instance, it will take quite a long time um, to do both of these things. That How long will depend on whether or not you are using the autos or not, whether or not you've put this option. If you do, then it will take a lot longer. Um, but even without that, it will probably take um, you know 45 minutes or so to do both of these things. And you want to wait until that's finished before you run the second instance of uh, Autobank. And at that point, you're going to get rid of these options. You won't need them anymore. Um, the next uh, option we have here is the type of super tagger that you want to use. There are all different types. You don't just have to tag overt categories, atomic categories. You could actually use MG super tags, which are different, which are discussed in the ACL paper. Um, so I won't go into that in detail here. It's, it's explained here what, the, what these mean. But uh, initially what you're going to be using and what I've been using exclusively almost so far uh, is Tmax. Um, which is the max n using the uh, overt atomic tags, not the super tags, which is ST. Um, you won't want to use these uni ones. These are for unigrams rather than max n, and they don't work very well. So you can you can forget about those um, essentially. Now max mg cats, um, which takes an in, uh, a floating point um, parameter. This specifies the maximum number of mg categories that can be assigned on average. Uh, no, sorry, per word, not just on average, um, but per word. Um, so um, so uh, you, this is something that, uh, this, is, you, this can be used sort of instead of the beams, or you, you'll use the beam anyway, but you'll, it's, it's easier to, to vary this, but they both have the same effect, which is to limit the number of tags per word. Um, uh, but I used this when I was um, varying um, uh, things for different uh, string lengths of sentence. So for uh, sentences of length 1 to 12, I was using between 2.8 and 3 words per uh, categories per word. And when I went up to uh, lengths 13 to 16, say, I uh, put that down a bit to 2.3 or something, uh, and so on as you go up. And again, it's the sort of thing you can do multiple runs and you can vary that. Sometimes if you want to do a super fast run, you can just set it to one and then see what you get. Um, you, want, you, you probably don't want to do that as your initial uh, thing because you'll get some incorrect trees probably. Um, but you, you can try that later on when you want to sort of try it to get some trees for sentences that maybe took so long that the parser timed out. Uh, you could try going back over them uh, using a much more restricted uh, one. And, and uh, you know, similarly, you could put it up to five and try it on some shorter ones, um, see what happens. Um, so uh, now we've got this, uh, this argument, uh, use all null. Now you'll remember that when you run the um, the parser, when it's not in super tag mode, it introduces certain null heads incrementally. Uh, so it doesn't introduce relativizer heads or extraposer heads straight away because it will try and get a parse without them. And then it will incrementally start introducing them. And uh, that's to improve efficiency. Um, but it can mean that sometimes a correct analysis can be bled by an incorrect one. Um, and you can use this use all null to override that and to uh, tell the, the system to just use all null categories straight away. I'd only recommend using that for the, the shortest sentences, and I haven't used it at all really so far. But again, it's something that was in the GUI. Um, use all available null categories was there. Um, so that if you use that when you parse a sentence, it will be saved as such, and it will always do that. So it will always go through and use every null head that it can. It won't stop 
uh, just because it's, it's found a pause, it will just keep going. So it is inefficient and you only want to use it, as I say, for the shortest um, sentences. Uh, then finally we've got skip rel and skip pro and they correspond to these options that you've got in the GUI here do not use pro x categories and do not use relativizers uh, they have the same effect so they won't use those null heads and that can be that could be particularly helpful if you're trying to get rightward movement rightward movement examples with extra poses you could switch these on and you're just basically going to not get any sentences that have relativization in them but you're not looking for those anyway uh, and it will improve efficiency okay so let's just um, run an instance of the automatic generator then um, and we will just copy and paste the uh, command i've got here and we'll uh, paste it into this window uh, so you can see we've not used all the options here, but we've got Python, Autobank.py, MGBank, Autogen, and then a whole bunch of other options. We're just doing the folder 00. zero. We're doing lengths 5 to 10. We've got that beam ceiling, that beam floor. Um, we're using the basic parser. We're stopping after two sentences. Max movement distance is 12. We're constraining the constituencies uh, with the Pentrebank and CCG constituencies and uh, we're training the tagger, we're extracting dependencies and we uh, are going to have 2.8 categories per word maximum. So we'll uh, run that now and uh, that will take a while um, because as I say it's going to train the tagger and it's going to extract dependencies. So we'll just have a look at, and see what it does initially. Um, but while it's doing that I will just talk a bit about a couple of other things. Um, so as I mentioned, you can run several instances um, and of this automatic generator in parallel. And uh, the good thing is that you can run those on, um, when it's the automatic generator, you can run it on a Linux machine, not just a Mac. Uh, the GUI at the moment requires a Mac, but the uh, automatic generator does not. Um, and uh, so you can just essentially SSH remotely into a remote server, as I've been doing, onto the Edinburgh servers and uh, run things from there. Um, but when you do, if you do want to run them on a Linux machine, you just have to make one very slight alteration in the file system when you copy these over. Um, and uh, that is found if you go into the seed bank, uh, no, in fact, it's not, it's in mgpars, and you're looking for a file called, um, uh, or a folder rather called canned C, there it is. So you've got two versions of it, a Linux one and another one. Now this one is for Mac. And what I do every time when I'm going to copy these files onto the uni servers is I rename that one as Mac and then I rename that one by getting rid of the Linux and then everything will work fine. If you copy that over now, it will work. Um, but if you forget to do that, then it, it will just crash. OK, so um, do remember to do that. And then when you uh, copy these, um, so when you finish doing that, and if you want to run things on your again, of course, Linux back there and delete Mac. So right, I've done that, deleted that now because that would have caused problems here. If uh, if I left that like that, it would have crashed. So you can see now in this window that we've got some output. And what's happened is that uh, first of all, it loaded all the Pen Tree Bank folders as it does when it opens the GUI, but it hasn't gone into the GUI this time. It's done some training um, here. Um, it's extracting uh, a Maxent model, uh, and it's also um, matching some pen tree bank trees to some of those new sentences that were entered in. As I said, it will look to match sentences that you've entered in, added to the corpus, so that it can extract new CCG bank trees. And it's done that for the sentence, a leveling off of farmer selling removed some of the downward pressure. So in the pen tree bank, there'll be a sentence that contains that, but is probably much larger than that. And it's extracted that and it can use that during um, during its training. So uh, one uh, final thing to mention is uh, the location of the um, trees. If you want to get at these trees that it's generating, um, if you come into MG pars and let's arrange that by uh, the name of the file, uh, then you'll find two folders, WSJ MG bank auto and WSJ MG bank seed. The seed trees are the hand annotated ones and you can view all of those in here just by opening up a folder and opening up a file there they are and they contain six 
minimalist grammar trees for every sentence and those six trees correspond to the six different views that you have inside the GUI. Uh, so you remember you had the X-bar view, the MG derived tree view, and then four different uh, derivation tree views, and that's what they correspond to. And you can do the same with uh, the uh, auto trees as well. So uh, that's exactly the same. Open that up and you'll find all of the files in there with all of the automatically generated trees. Um, now I should mention that sometimes when you're running the automatic generator you, you will need to keep an eye on, on all of them. So every morning I go in and I check all 24 instances to make sure they're running. I run them on different screens um, and uh, very occasionally one of them just randomly crashes and there's no reason for it. It's probably a server issue but I just restart that and, and then it's fine. So uh, don't think if, if one of your instances crashes or oh, there's some horrible bug in the code or something just try restarting it and it uh, you know it should work now uh, this is still running and it's going to take much too long um, to show you all of uh, uh, the steps but basically once it's finished this it will start to extract dependencies for each of the sections of the um, pen tree bank and as I say if you're including autos that will take a much longer time so this whole thing will probably take about three or four hours if you're doing that before it starts actually generating um, and you need to wait until all of that's finished before you start any other uh, um, processes basically um, otherwise things will, uh, uh, things will crash basically uh, so uh, yeah once it's extracted all of those dependencies the next thing that it will do is um, that it will uh, basically start generating trees for the corpus and it will, it will give you lots of printout to show you um, when it's uh, been successful and when it hasn't and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that uh, you'll find Autobank useful. Um, as I said in the last video, uh, really this is intended as a starting point. Uh, minimalism is a very complicated theory so uh, you know, there are lots of competing analyses for, for the different constructions out there. It's not the case that you can just open up one textbook and find what the standard analysis is for all constructions. Uh, so it's in inevitably going to be the case that lots of people will disagree with the analyses that I've chosen uh, for relative clauses or for control and so on and so forth. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I hope that people will want to uh, modify this tree bank or even create their own from scratch. And uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that this is very much a kind of starting point. Um, it's the coverage is, is going to be about 50% of the trees in the, in the pen tree bank at the moment. And um, obviously uh, it'd be great if we could get it ultimately much higher than that. So, um, yeah, so uh, hopefully Autobank will, will prove useful in, uh, in stimulating um, sort of more interest in wide coverage minimalist parsing. Anyway, thanks for listening.